Hi, I'm Roberto. In this video, we will see, in less than 10 minutes, some of the new features of the newest version of ASP.NET. This video is recorded at the beginning of December 2014, so it's possible that you may find differences between the content shown here and the current version. So, I recommend to go to ASP.NET to get updated information. In this video, we are going to cover the following components the core CLR and what does it represent for our app, how does the configuration process changes, and finally, we will cover the new dependency injection. So let's start with the core CLR. The core CLR, which represents a subset of the full net framework, is similar to uh, what we have in client profile. It's multi-platform and it currently works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, the latest using Mono. One of the features of the CLR is that it's deployed with our app, so we can be independent of the version of the framework used by other apps on the same server. Finally, the references have been split into several Nugget packages, simplifying the process of managing version of the assemblies. This approach has some disadvantages because we lose some features that are tied to a specific version of Windows, such as the registry, the event log, and all the Win32 APIs. So let's take a look on the core CLR on a Visual Studio 2015 solution. If we go to a vNext project on Visual Studio 2015, the first thing that we are going to notice is that there is a difference between ASP.NET, in this case 5.0, and ASP.NET Core that can be seen in the References folder. If we click, for example, here, we can see the different Nugget packages that are related to ASP.NET full CLR. And on this side, there are the references related to the core CLR. One thing that we can see is that each package has their own dependencies. So if we click here, we can see the different dependencies of this specific package. One of the things that we may ask is, how could I know if a package is supported on the core CLR? In this case, we are going to go to our Solution Explorer. We are going to the Home Controller. And here, what we are going to do is to create a new entry on the event log. As right now, we are on the ASP.NET Core 5.0, it won't be able to know what is event log. So we can switch to ASP.NET 5.0. If you right click on it, on the quick actions, it will say that we must add the using system diagnostics and it will let us compile this part. If we go back to ASP.NET Core 5.0, then we will see that in this case, the system diagnostic do not include a references to event log. How can we handle these references? As we said before, these references are handled by Nugget packages. So, we are going to here, to References folder, click on Manage Nugget Packages. Here, we can search for Facebook and we can select the OWIN Security Facebook component for enabling Facebook login into our app. Once we have it, we click on Install, accept the license, and it will be starting the installation and the add of this package to our solution. Once the references have been completed, we will see that it starts to restore both the ASP.NET 5.0 and the Core uh, 5.0. Once the references have been completed, we can see here Microsoft Owen Security Facebook and also on the core CLR here. On the configuration side, we can see that we lose the dependency with the web config and that dependency is replaced with a customizable configuration which may include files on JSON, XML, INI or environment variables or even our custom format. Let's see it in action. When we create an ASP.NET solution on Visual Studio, we will get by default this config.json file. This is a JSON file that contains a default connection string for entity framework, but it's fully customizable to our needs. How would we use this config.json? By using the startup CS file. Here, what we can see in the constructor is that we can select a new configuration set a specific file for a JSON file and add environment variables. We can also, if we click on add, specify our own configuration source 
for using this configuration. So we could use any file, you, we, we could use JSON file, or as I told before, we can use our custom way of working. For using the configuration in our controllers, once we have an instance of this configuration that we can show on the dependency injection that we'll see on the next code, we can just write get and the full path of the key that we are looking for. Finally, we are going to talk about dependency injection. For dependency injection, we have four kinds of objects that we can use. The first one is singleton, that it will going to create the one instance on the first call, and it will be using the same instance for all the calls. The second is instance, that you must pass a specific object, and it will use that object for the rest of the calls. The next is scope, that is going to be a shared instance per request. And finally, there's going to be tracent that's going to create a new instance on each of the calls. So let's see a demo of these four dependency injection options. If you go back to our startup CS right here, on the section of configuring services, we can see three different dependency injection options. On the first side, we have tracent that's going to have a single instance every time we ask for this interface. On the other hand, we have singleton, that it will create an instance the first time, and it will reuse the same instance every time that we make a request to the singleton. And finally, for the instance side, we are going to pass a reference to the configuration. So with these three options, we can have a lot of possibilities for our dependency injection of our controllers. This is a very simple, dependency injection engine and is compatible with other dependency injections such as Ninject or Unity. So if we need more of our engine, we can use those uh, custom third parties. But finally, how to start playing now with all these features that we have seen here? If we'd like to play with Visual Studio 2015, we can download it from this URL. And on the other hand, if we use Sublime, Atom, Veeam, Emacs, on, or any other text editor, we can use the OmniSharp project that gives us some IntelliSense and some compiling abilities to our ASP.NET projects. There is way more that we haven't showed in this video, such as Bower and Grunt, routing, or the view components. And this is all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comment, please let it here on the YouTube page or on the blog page. You can follow me at Twitter at rlbisby or at rlbisbe.net. Thank you.